Tonight, our special transmission as polio virus found in Gaza's sewage sparks health concerns. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Muslim News Canada on Muslim Network TV. I'm Zahra Sayed. Today is the 291st day since Israel started targeting Palestinians indiscriminately. Palestinian Health Ministry reports Israeli airstrikes have killed dozens of Palestinians in Khan Yunis today. The strikes come as the Israeli military has issued new evacuation orders. This will affect over 400,000 civilians in Khan Yunis. The Nasser Medical Complex has reported receiving 27 dead bodies and numerous injured individuals from the latest assaults. Israel claims its jets have targeted around 35 sites across Gaza. It says the forces have struck a Hamas rocket launch site and its military infrastructure. The Israeli army has fired upon a United Nations convoy en route to Gaza City. The convoy vehicles were clearly marked as UN property. It was struck by bullets but managed to continue its mission. No casualties have been reported. Israeli newspaper Haaretz reports the number of Israeli soldiers seeking psychological support has increased sixfold. Media reports show Israeli settlers carrying out provocative rituals at the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound in East Jerusalem. During these incidents, Israeli police restricted Palestinian access to the site. Israel's incessant attacks have killed 38,983 Palestinians. A revised report by the United Nations estimates another 10,000 civilians are buried under the rubble. 89,727 Palestinians are injured. Israel's death toll from Hamas's attacks stands at 1,139. Israel faces accusation of genocide at the International Court of Justice. The court has ordered Israel to immediately halt its military operations in Rafah. More than 1 million Palestinians were seeking refuge in Rafah before it was invaded by Israeli forces on May 6. The Israeli military announced today the deaths of two additional Israeli hostages. These two hostages were kidnapped from homes in Kibbutzim on October 7. Intelligence reports indicate they are no longer alive. The Israeli government believes one-third of the hostages are presumed dead. 116 hostages have yet to be repatriated. Israeli airstrikes this past Saturday have targeted Yemen's Hodeida port. The strikes have hit fuel depots and caused at least three casualties. Houthi spokesperson Nasruddin Amir has dismissed the attacks as futile. He is calling the move an act of aggression meant to pressure Yemen to stop supporting Palestine. Amr says the action would only strengthen Yemeni's support for Gaza. Houthi officials have vowed retaliation. They warn that Israel would face a response for targeting civilian facilities. The Israeli strikes follow a Houthi drone attack on Tel Aviv that killed a civilian and injured others. Israeli Defense Minister Yov Gallant justifies the action as retaliation for Houthi attacks on Israel. U.S. officials deny any involvement in the strikes. And in related news, former Israeli Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman is calling for the complete destruction of the Yemeni port of Al Hudaydah. He describes the port as a key entry point from where Iranian weapons reach Houthi rebels. Lieberman's remarks come after Israeli airstrikes have targeted the port. Widespread reactions have emerged following the latest verdict by the International Court of Justice. The court declared on Friday that Israel's presence in the occupied Palestinian territories is unlawful. The decision is a non-binding advisory opinion. It also urges nations to halt support that sustains Israel's occupation. Countries worldwide have responded robustly. Palestinian leaders are celebrating the ruling as a pivotal moment in their quest for justice. On the other hand, Israel has condemned the decision. The United States has expressed concern that the ruling could complicate peace efforts. This comes despite the United States acknowledging that Israeli settlements are illegal under international law. Australia and Belgium say Israel needs to halt settlement expansion and respect international law. Brazil and Bolivia are advocating for a two-state solution. They're calling for immediate action to end violations. Egypt, Iceland and Jordan demand an end to Israeli occupation and settlement activities. 
Indonesia, Malaysia, and Norway are urging the international community to enforce the court's decision and compel Israel to comply. Saudi Arabia and Turkey are stressing on the need for a just resolution to the Palestinian issue. The United Kingdom is reviewing the ruling. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has arrived today in the United States. Netanyahu's visit comes as President Joe Biden has withdrawn from this year's presidential race. Biden announced his decision to withdraw in a social media post. He has endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris as his successor. Netanyahu will meet Biden at the White House tomorrow, where the discussions between Biden and Netanyahu will focus on a Gaza ceasefire and the return of hostages. He will also meet with Harris. Netanyahu will address the Congress on Wednesday. Some senators, including Bernie Sanders, have announced they will not attend Netanyahu's speech. Israeli Finance Minister Bezalel Smotrich has condemned the possibility of U.S. sanctions over his support for illegal settlement expansion in the occupied West Bank. Smotrich is a prominent figure in the far-right religious Zionism party. He is calling the sanctions a fatal blow to Israeli sovereignty. Reports have emerged suggesting the White House is considering taking action against Smotrich. Smotrich argues that targeting an elected official undermines both Israeli sovereignty and bilateral relations. Polio virus has been detected in the sewage of the besieged Palestinian territory of Gaza. The discovery threatens the health of thousands living in the crowded tent camps. The Gaza Ministry of Health, in collaboration with UNICEF, has confirmed the presence of component poliovirus type 2 in wastewater. Officials say the virus could contaminate already scarce drinking water. Authorities are warning of potential disease outbreak due to the overflow of untreated sewage in the densely populated region. Dr. Tanya Hajj Hassan describes the virus's presence as a ticking time bomb. The discovery follows a report of Gaza's severe sanitation crisis. A Canadian citizen has been killed after allegedly threatening Israeli security forces with a knife near the Gaza border. The Israeli military says the man drove to the entrance of an Israeli town close to the border. He then exited his vehicle and began threatening security forces with a knife. In response, the forces opened fire, resulting in the man's death. The confrontation occurred at the entrance of the town of Netiv Hasara. The town is located approximately 300 meters north of the Gaza border. Thank you for watching. Our news is produced by Muslim Network TV, which is a not for profit organization. We need your support for donations. Please scan the QR code on our broadcast or visit MuslimNetwork.tv to donate now so we can continue to amplify the voices of Muslims in Canada and abroad. Assalamu alaikum.